Whoa! Look at all those swords! That's what happens when the legendary blacksmith Kurogane toils so hard he forgets to die. I gave up everything, thinking of nothing else but forging a sword that could surpass Stormhow. And before I knew it... You had traded your humanity for demonhood. I see I'm not the only one. So great was your grudge against your brother, the inheritor of Stormhow. Well, guess we're not so different. You don't suppose you could hammer me up a new sword, do you? I've forged countless blades over these long years, yet not one has proven a match for Stormhowl. And yet you still seek a Kurogane sword? I'll put it like this. No matter how much you've failed across the centuries, you've never broken. Well, I'm the same way. If anything can break Shigure and his god blade, it's the bitterness I carry. Strangely enough, seeing you and your brother has given me an idea that might work. I will forge you a new blade. Should we get some Brightstone? Nope. No need for that. Huh? Should I take it from the top? If you would, my arms are all I'll be needing. doing don't be alarmed I'm just cutting free some raw materials for the sword you see something new every day you need his head to make the sword that's right with this fine clump of pure resentment I shall forge your imitation storm howl anew no I only keep this imitation as a reminder of how weak-willed I was in the past. To defeat Shigure, I've perfected the art of dual-wielding, a secret Rangetsu technique. All right. If that's what you prefer, a pair of short swords it is. Wait outside. The ship is on its way, right on schedule. Of course it is. They don't have the Reaper on board. One more thing. Apparently, Shigure is Arturius' bodyguard. So we'll have to face him down sometime. No matter what. It's in our best interest to get rid of him while he's working alone. The problem is, Rokuro can't beat him by himself. Agreed. Shigure is not to be trifled with. Certainly. That- You want us to meddle in somebody else's private quarrel? If it affects my own quarrel, yes. I suppose I'm in the same position. Besides, I can still use him. Rokuro's not really a guy to care about the big picture. I made the Enfu rush out to the docks to scout the place out. Pretty smart, am I right? I pity that creature sometimes. That Kurogane, though. What a character. Giving his own body to forge a sword. Like some kind of ritual sacrifice. Ritual sacrifice. It's certainly something only a demon would do. It was a necessary sacrifice in order to gain power. A necessary sacrifice. What a vicious turn of phrase. Indeed. Still... I can't say I'm not thrilled to see how it all turns out. If what you give is mere meat for a god's morbid lunch, could there be a more trivial sacrifice? But if the offering is one's own body and soul, even a single hair can be portentous. I wonder what she will have been in the end. Rokuro, Kurogane... I just do not understand them. You saw them. Demons. We're crazy. Sure. 
but they go through life with such crystal clear sense of purpose. Even demons have things they're not willing to let go. Or do you think us mere animals, running around killing people left and right? I know, I know. I understand demons still have a certain consciousness, but I look at those two and they seem passionate, like normal people. Well, I've yet to meet a human so passionate he'd chop his own head off. Do you have a purpose like they do? I do, in fact. Ever since Artorius used my brother as a sacrifice. Typical demon nonsense. The Abbey exists to protect the people. Yes, sometimes cold, painful decisions need to be made to protect the many. But they never stoop to human sacrifice. Besides, as Shepard, Artorius will cleanse the world of- If that's what you think, ask the precious Shepard yourself. Ask him just what he did three years ago. He wouldn't. He'd never- Rokuro wants to slay his brother, even if it kills him. And Kurogane had his own head lopped off just to forge powerful swords. How do those two find it in themselves to go so far? It's just how they are. They're demons. Not exactly normal. Yeah, it's scary. But I also kinda admire it. But me, I don't have anything I'm that desperate to accomplish. Not yet, you mean. In time, you'll find something. You really think so? Almost certainly. But don't feel you have to go and risk your life over it. You're not a demon, and you should stay that way. You deserve a normal life. Okay. But never mind. Just the foolish ramblings of a demon girl. Bad, bad news! A group of Praetors have left the docks and are headed this way! They said they were coming to purge Eleanor the traitor! Purge? Velvet, what do we do? We take them head on. And you're fighting with us, Eleanor. An order, I presume. It is. Protect Lafayette and defeat the exorcists. All right. I understand. Just remember, if we lose Eleanor, Lafayette will turn into a demon. I haven't forgotten. She needs us for her own ends, and we'll use that to our advantage in this fight. Just don't push your luck too far, Velvet. And so recently was she a noble, upstanding young exorcist. How quickly one falls when entering Velvet's dark orbit. Ask me if I care. Praetor Eleanor, you should be ashamed of yourself, cowering to demons. Your collusion could spell disaster to the Abbey if left unchecked. The only possible atonement is your death.
You've betrayed the people and sullied Artorius' ideals. No, that's not... <laughs> Velvet, she's testing me. I know I have to fight. My mission calls for it. But any more of this will kill them. Time for you to die and be purged! Eleanor! I can't do it! I can't kill them! I'm not done yet! There. Now we're even, Eleanor. You've got new swords! Sinister. I like it. I take it you're ready. Yeah. All that's left is to kill Shigure. With me as a witness. I... I... Keep on fighting like that, and you'll be killed. And if you get killed, Luffy said we'll lose his vessel. I know that! Velvet, wait! You're not going to kill them? I'm just not that hungry right now. I've got new orders for you. Fight the exorcists, but make sure they don't die. Understood. I guess that was as far as Eleanor could go. I think so. Push her any further and she's bound to break. <laughs> Ever the virtuous exorcist. That very virtue is what lets her be Lafayette's vessel. Besides, I can't help but admire her commitment. She's enduring total disgrace to accomplish her mission. How uncommonly pleasant of you. Pleasant folks don't use people the way we do. Yeah, you've got that right. Phil, I was wondering if I could talk to you about something that's on my mind. I figured it was just about the time that you and I had the talk, actually. I've seen it all, heard it all, and even tasted it all in my time as a Moloch. Ask me anything you want. Thanks. I was hoping you could let me borrow those books you were reading earlier, if that's okay. You mean, how to talk a human female into becoming your vessel, and how to get the cuties? Hey! Keep it down! Keep it down! But you and Madame Eleanor have already formed a pact! Why do you still need either of those books? Well, it's like when we're alone together, things get so awkward. It's hard to talk with her, you know? <laughs> that happens a lot with Malakim and Vessels who are still new to the whole thing. I've been there. In that case, I've got an even better book for you. Whoa, you read a lot of books. I'm just an avid learner is all. Now let's see. Oh, here we go. Hot Spring Topics, bearing your body and your soul. Being upfront and honest is always the best policy. I... I don't think we'll be bathing in any hot springs together. All right, then how about after bath party games, dropping your defenses and your towels? Why do you keep trying to get us naked? I think that would just make things even more awkward. Picky, picky. Tell you what, you can just look at my- Love hacking, living long and loving hard, diary of a diary thief. Hands speak louder than words. All classics. I remember reading them when Miss Mogilu and I were struggling to get along. Oh, to be young again. You ever think maybe things would have been easier if you never read these books? Reading the mood. Knowing what to say and how to say it. That one's a winner. A must read for sure. Are you two reading something together? We are. We are. Luffy said's been worried about that awkward distance between you two, and he came to me for some advice. I've heard his side of the story, so let's you and I grab some tea and talk about what to do about it. Come on! Let's go, let's go! Oh, 
Okay. Knowing what to say and how to say it. I don't think this will help either. Rokuro, why did he call your storm howl a reject? Well, you see, when blacksmiths make swords, they don't just make one at a time. They make a whole bunch. The best one of them all is the one that gets presented to the swords commissioner, while the rest are tossed aside. Huh. I didn't realize the standards were so high. The head of my clan gets the real storm howl, and his siblings get the remainders. So one is real, and the others are imitations? I guess so. Shigure has the real one, and... Yeah, guess that makes mine an imitation. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to imply... Don't apologize. You got me to finally realize something. It might just be why I'm so hung up on beating him. Oh. And to Velvet? Which Luffy said is real, and which is the imitation? Oh... What are you saying? She means my name. It's the same as Velvet's brothers. Huh? The one who went and got sacrificed by Artorias. Surely you are mistaken. Our shepherd would never do such a thing. But what else could make Velvet hate Artorias so much? I... I don't... So you have a truth, and Velvet has a truth. Now which is the real one, and which is the imitation? Uh... uh...
finish this move. I did good, didn't I? Shigure both used the Rangetsu style. But to me, it looked like you both fight completely differently. Why is that? Our school encompasses two distinct forms. To the outside world, we're known for fighting with a single great sword. But we also study dual short swords should need arise. So, Shigure uses the great sword, and you use the short. In most schools, wouldn't the secondary technique be used primarily in support of the first? That's true for us as well. We learned the dual short swords to provide sparring partners for those studying the great sword. Then why would you handicap yourself against Lord Shigure? He's no mere swordsman. As I'm painfully aware, Shigure is a true master. We trained together since we were small children. I was his sparring partner for ten years. <sighs> his skill with the great sword is godlike. So, in order to beat him, I took up the short blades. To our school, it might be secondary, but it's what I know best. You're badly disadvantaged in reach. If I eliminate my fear, I have a chance. If I can control the terror of being split in half and I can step inside his guard, he'll have two times the trouble. Eliminating fear, huh? A style for someone who's lost his humanity. Right? It's like you two brothers are the very swords you carry. Huh? Stormhowl, a godlike sword known to all as the strongest there ever was. Storm Quell, burdened by the ceaseless struggle to best the other! One, an exorcist who walks in the light. One, a demon moving through the shadows. The only thing these two polar opposites want... ...is to cut down the other. Precisely! Both are renowned blades. But I don't see what exorcists and demons have to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> 